you can't keep me cooped up in here, okay? I am a peacock. You gotta let me fly. Aga! You gotta let the peacock loose. This is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. Of course, I don't know if peacocks go, ah! I don't know. I lived in Miami for years. I never really talked to a peacock. I want to talk about one thing today. I want to talk about being bold. I want to talk about being different. I want to talk about mixing up anything. I want to talk about just having the opportunity to do something totally out of the box. But before we get into that about the Giants, I want to talk about the new podcast, which I'm excited about. 312 and 1, the return of the New York Giants. The 2020 season. It's going to be a podcast, probably going to be a weekly podcast, maybe bi weekly, maybe twice a week. I haven't decided yet. We got to see what comes up, what comes around. The first te- test episode will be launched this afternoon, sometime around 4 30. You can catch it on my channel here. You can catch it on wherever I have podcasts, which are everywhere. It's going to be with the world famous OGR Sports, my buddy, hanging out for an hour, talking giants. Catch it. Tell us what you think. Like I said, it's the test version, guys. So get, cut us a break. <laughs> We're still working on the audio. We're still working on the sound. Still working on the sound effects, but it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of good content today. And it's an hour long. You get me and OG. Oh, she refresh refer, refer, OGR for an hour. I want to talk about, I think we know what we want to talk about. Malik Willis. Bring him the boom. I think everyone knows that I want to make Malik Willis in the big boom stick over to MetLife. That I want to be different. I want to be bold. I want to be exciting. I want to have a final plea to the New York Giants organization to to think out of the box, to do something different, to take a look at your current situation and say, you know what, something's not working here the last three years and move on from that situation because of the fact that at the end of the day, it's about winning football games. It's not worrying about what the who, you know what color your quarterback is. It's not worrying about what school he comes from. It's about putting W's in the win column. That's all it's about. And it's about building an organization. It's about building a culture. I cringe when I say that. I think it's your judge. <laughs> it's about buildings towards something. You have the fifth pick. You have the seventh pick. If the Detroit Lions do not grab Malik Willis, it's time to bring Malik to MetLife. It's time. And I'm, this is my last and final passionate plea to all those in the New York Giants organization. You have to do this. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm just thinking of this in reference to the fact that it's just a passionate conversation. I am talking about this in, in the matter of facts, in the matter of football. I am talking about this by in the matter that this player has talent. I jokingly said a couple weeks ago, that out of the 32 starting quarter, I should say 32 starting quarterbacks, out of, at, not counting Daniel Jones, so out of the 31 starting quarterbacks, there is one quarterback that I would not take over Daniel Jones. And I find that interesting because I jokingly said that that quarterback is Jared Goff. Jokingly said I, wouldn't, I would never take Jared Goff over Daniel Jones. I would keep, Dan, I would keep Jared Goff. Because you, you saw how bad he was with a three ten and one record over in Detroit. And I didn't really watch any of the games. I didn't look at anything statistically. I, I didn't see anything. And then I went back and did a breakdown. Detroit had a worse team than the giants. They had a worse line. They had a worse receiving positions. They had a worse running game. They had a worse everything, but somehow Jared Goff, Jared Goff, former number one overall pick out of California, still completed 67% of his passes for uh, 300, excuse me, for 3,245 yards, 19 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. Jared Goff did this in 14, in 14 games for, our, 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 for the Detroit Lions. In 14 games, he did this. And I've said this before, and I jokingly said this on the stream yesterday. I said I wanted to sell, uh, I wanted to sell rubber sheets with Daniel Jones' picture on it for all the Daniel Jones lovers out there, because if they, if he had these type of numbers, if he had Jared Goff type numbers, the Daniel Jones apologist would be wetting the bed. And that's why I want to get the rubber sheets with Daniel Jones face on this. Cause they can have something, but I didn't even think about it. I didn't even look at it. I, I, I didn't even, I, I didn't even fathom that he, he was on such a bad team in Detroit that he could have had any good games whatsoever and only play in 14 games. 
I'm not going to look at their overall record in reference to Jared Goff and Daniel Jones because of the fact that, of course, it's it's not a fair comparison because you had uh, Jared with on um, two good Rams teams. But if you do want to talk about it, he did make two Pro Bowls. He's four times player of the week. He was the offensive player of the month in 2018. And I thought to myself, I wouldn't take Jared Goff over Daniel Jones. Now I'm looking at it going, you know what? Probably I would. I would do that. And I, I was shocked by that. I was shocked by the first game of the season. He threw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns and interception. I was shocked that he, compl- he threw for over 300 yards on, uh, excuse me, at 12 out of 14 games. That was over 200 yards. That is at a 12 out of 14 games. I was shocked that he completed almost 70% of his passes. These numbers, if they were Daniel Jones numbers, everyone in New York who were Daniel Jones fans would be in love. But then you go back and you take a look at Daniel Jones and you take a look at his numbers. His highest completion percentage was last year at 64% where they limited the offense for him and he still only had 10 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. And the next year, it was 62% with 2,900 yards, 11 and 10. And then the year before, of course, his rookie season was 61 for 24 and 12. But if you remove three of those games, he basically has 13 and 12. It's not there. It's just not there. It's a rant. It turned into a rant. It was a plea. Now it's a rant. People are like, well, he's going to be, hey, we're going to make him to the Josh Allen. Even your head coach has basically come out and said, Daniel Jones is not Josh Allen. Different skill sets. And if you want to be the day bull, you're going to want to run the offense that made you successful. And that's going to be the offense that Josh Allen ran. Now, where could we find, let's think about this for a minute. Where can we find a quarterback who has similar attributes to Josh Allen and an incredibly high upside on the board, the Malik Willis express. That's right. We're dropping the Malik Willis express into MetLife. People will point out to the fact, well, he couldn't cut it at all. He couldn't cut it at all, but he had to leave all So other quarterbacks did not get ever get beat out by other quarterbacks or have to transfer schools. I think we need to go back and look at a few that were just drafted. Also, Auburn wanted to make him a wide receiver. But Malik believed in his ability enough to say, no, I am a quarterback. Just as Lamar Jackson didn't want to run the 40 during his pro day because of the fact that he didn't want people to think that he was only fast. You need to believe in your talent. You need to believe in your ability And let's face facts, that's what Malik does. Malik does believe in his ability. He believed into his ability enough that he went to a small Baptist school. College, that is. Had his team in 2020 in the top 25 rankings. Had a team last year that was devoid of talent and still brought them to eight wins and led college football in total touchdowns, Malik Willis did. People forget that stat. People don't understand that. People just like, well, he played at Liberty and he had a bad game against Ole Miss. The dude had 27 touchdowns passing on a bad Auburn team that was devoid of talent. He had an additional 13 touchdowns rushing. So he had 40 total touchdowns. On a bad Liberty team, on a better Liberty team the year before, which is still devoid of talent, he still rushed for over 944 yards and six touchdowns. He still threw for over 2,200 yards and 20 touchdowns. What, 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 what are we not seeing here, people? And the people will be like, well, he had a bad game against Ole Miss. If you go back to college and into the pros and look at all the bad games Daniel Jones has, by that logic, Daniel Jones should have been cut two years ago. By that logic. He has the arm strength. He has the creativity. 
He has the ability to move around the pocket. And people will point out to the fact, well, he scrambles first before he throws. He's not looking downfield. Really? Because in 2020, he looked downfield a hell of a lot more than he did in 2021 because he had no offensive line help in 2021. But still with no offensive line help and no skilled positions, he still threw for his total yards of 28, excuse me, 2,857 with 27 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. And eight of those interceptions came in two games where he was trying to do too much to keep his team in the game. You have many scouts now that are coming out. You have many talking heads pontificating about Malik Wills and the Giants, which I found very interesting. You had someone come out yesterday and say, you know what? If you are looking for a Josh Allen-esque quarterback and you are looking for somebody who can run the Brian Dable offense and be successful for the Giants, it would be Malik Willis. No one mentions Daniel Jones. You go outside the New York bubble. You pop the New York bubble. You go outside. There's no one out there that, I could, that, I, that I've ever talked to that b- believes in Daniel Jones. And I will tell you this. If we were Eagle fans, or Washington Commander fans, we'd be laughing at the Giants for their starting quarterback. And I've said this before. I hope to God I'm wrong about Daniel Jones. I hope he blossoms into the greatest quarterback. I hope he turns, I hope ter- to hope he turns it all around and makes me look like a fool. You want to know why? Because then that means the Giants are being successful. That means the Giants are on the right direction. And I'd be more than happy to sit there and tell you I was wrong about Daniel Jones. I'd be more than happy to tell you that. But I'm sorry, I don't see it. He can't even finish a season. You need to do something different. You hired a young, innovative general manager. You hired what you perceive to be a young, innovative head coach. And then you're going to saddle them with a quarterback that's not even their choice? Why? Why would you do that to these gentlemen? Because of the fact that it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It, it, makes, it, makes, it makes no sense. And I don't, I mean. I think you're going to get away with it. Not up in here. Not up in here. You can't get away with it. You have to do something different. You have to let Dable and Shane fail or succeed with their own talent. And I'm not looking at Kenny Pickett. I have no problem the size of the hands of Kenny Pickett. I have the problem with the fact that people point out that he smashed all Don Marino's records, but they forget about the COVID situation where he was actually played in five seasons. People forget about that. I think Kenny Pickett will be a better immediate quarterback. But I think in the long term, you need someone like Malik Willis to come in here and do something different to this team. Electrify this crowd. That's what we need. We need a little electricity. I will tell you this. I was there the day they opened the Meadowlands against against the uh, Cowboys, which we lost. I was there the day they opened MetLife, the preseason game, the very first game in MetLife. I was there when the Giants played the Jets. I was there. The electricity from the Meadowlands has never transferred over to MetLife. The Meadowlands was a dump. But there was an electricity in that stadium. There was a noise level in that stadium. There was a home field advantage in that stadium. That has never transferred over to MetLife. You want to breathe life back into the MetLife. You want to start something anew. You go get yourself a quarterback. You find something. You find something to excite the fan base. I swear, if he goes to Carolina, Carolina is going to be a destination because there's going to be something different about this. And then if Daniel Jones collapses, all we're going to hear is, That's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man. Because then everyone has all their thoughts and processes in the 2023 draft basket where already multiple teams are gathering multiple first round picks, which so it does not mean you are going to have the opportunity to get a CJ Stroud. Doesn't that mean you're going to have an opportunity to get a Bryce Young? 
And I've said this before. What if they turn into a Tua? What if they turn into a Spencer Rattler? What happens then? And what happens if he goes over to Carolina or to Pittsburgh, Malik Dennis, and turns the league on its year? Then we're going to be saying, well, we got we to wait till 2007. Excuse me, 2027, so we can get Archie Manning. We don't want to be the Jets in quarterback purgatory. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. How many teams, or what team can you think of, who has had a starting quarterback, Daniel Jones-esque, for more than three years, who have not already have moved on? The Giants and Mara do this too much. It's loyalty to the wrong places at the wrong times, which turns the franchise into where we're at right now. Be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. We got the big new podcast coming out today. We're going to launch it sometime this afternoon. It's got three, 12 and one, the return of the New York Giants, the 2022 season. 3-12-1, of course, to those that do not know, everyone should know in history. Actually, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to leave it in the comments. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I want to see. I want to see the. I want to see because I already know. I already know. I got the smartest fans. Our fi- fans. I hate saying fans. I don't want to say subscribers. I know I got the smartest guys that watch this channel. They all know what three twelve and one is. So write down what three twelve and one is. Maybe we'll give out a T-shirt or something. And again, this is Tim of the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you could like. Subscribe. If you're in that button, you know what I mean? That'd be awesome.